with one bug, he would, his character model would just like expand and he would be the size of Hogwarts. And so his whole model like wouldn't fit in the screen. So you just like see the back of his eye and just some <laughs> teeth, just trying to talk to you and be your friend. I was like, okay, <laughs> this was nightmare fuel. <laughs> I'd say that our job is to be almost like a middleman between the game and other developers, right? A lot of people, especially like my parents, you know, and they're like, oh, you just play games all day? I'm like, no, no, no. And they're like, okay, you just write like reports. I'm like, no, well, yeah, but at the same time, it's, you know, I'm working with artists, I'm working with writers. We're helping create what we would want as a consumer. So I remember during the cross wand stool, when those first got implemented, you could use your ancient magic finishers on the students. And so you're like, oh, cool. Uh, I just turned the student into a chicken. Or like, <laughs> this student's now confetti. Like, I don't think they're in the story anymore. So you send that back and then try to come up with a solution to how can we still use ancient magic without... Breaking the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> without like... <laughs> without just... Making like continuity and everything still makes sense. I focus a lot on like our talents, fighting a boss, all that. I tried to use cabbages, they didn't work. And I'm like, hold on. I'm just like, invested my time, my galleons, like my heart into these cabbages. I want to use them and reach out to the dev. Think about it, like we're using these talents. We're building this player. This is like a play style people want to have. And they're like, yeah, okay. So it's kind of nice because it makes me feel like, you know, I had that small impact for a player who's like, dude, I want to be a cabbage mage wizard. Like, I just want to, rely on these little dudes and it's like, go for it, roll them out. I've been thinking about this for a long time. <laughs> I think one of the funniest bugs that I've seen was when the teeth clipped through the, like a couple of NPCs mouths so that they look very um, scary a little bit. Um, I think a lot of bugs that deal with like the character models just like breaking in some way are very funny to me. How far did that poor key take us? Farther from London than the carriage traveled. During Fly 01 is when you're introduced to Everett, which is usually great, but with one bug, he would, his character model would just like expand and he would be the size of Hogwarts. And so his whole model like wouldn't fit in the screen. So you just like see the back of his eye and just some teeth, just trying to talk to you and be your friend. I was like, okay, this was nightmare fuel. Keep an eye on the skies for you. It was during AVM02, which is a stealth mission. You especially can't afford to be spotted. I'm supposed to play it stealthily, so. Obviously, I used the Mandrake as soon as I could. <laughs> it screams and then everyone detects you. But apparently when you got detected while the Mandrake was screaming, that scream effect would carry over to your new playthrough. But it didn't just play, it got like slow mode and reverbed. So the entire playthrough was just this mandrake screaming in slow motion and no matter what you could do, it would not stop. They must have just She's Game development is very complicated. A lot of the times those bugs are either really hard to reproduce and like they're like a 1% chance. And it's like, dude, I've tried 20 times to get this bug for you. I can't get it. And then like, it's a lot of like a cat and mouse game with the bug where like it'll pop up and disappear, pop up and then disappear. And you think that you fixed it or it got fixed, but it's not fixed. And then there's also like, when you put in fixes for bugs, sometimes that fix can completely break the rest of the game. And it's just like, well, do I want to break the game for this tiny bug that only happens one, out of like a thousand times, or do I want to just have a nice working game for the most part? In the past, when I would play games and they would have the little prompt to report this crash or report this bug, I would just ignore it. But now it's always just me pressing like, oh, send the report, typing up reports like I would on Jira at work, you know? I think it's also kind of funny because being in QA has helped me experience games in different ways. Because I remember what, before I did QA, I would play video games my way only. And now that I've done QA, it's like, 
Well, I'm not just thinking about myself and I'm not just thinking about this one mindset when I'm going to this game. Now I'm thinking about like, oh, like that's a really cool detail I didn't notice before because I was more focused on this thing because that's my play style instead of like, I don't know, exploring or doing puzzles without looking up the answer to the puzzles and stuff like that. QA is the kind of cornerstone. So you still communicate with all the different devs. So whether it's a cinematics bug, an NPC bug, just anything, we can reach out to producers, developers, all over and just figure out what the intent is, figure out what broke to get an understanding of either the software, the systems we're using, learn more about each side by communicating with the different developers depending on what we're bugging. But yeah, it's cool because like, we, we went, especially, I'm sure you guys too, like we've all gone from not knowing what half these words mean or, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so you're saying this and we can kind of like bounce back. You get that education through the experience, even though I might not be an animator, I've learned what animators do. I've learned what lighting is doing. I can go in our game and find out like, where's the sound coming from? Like what's causing this problem? All the developments are just like a Slack DM away. Yeah. So yeah. even if it's like a producer or like a head programmer, you can just message them on Slack and be like, hey, I saw this and just ask them a question, learn more about it. You never know who you're going to talk to, but at the end of the day, we all know that we're working towards a similar goal. And I think that is something that really keeps us together. Even our developers will be like, hey, saw this bug. Can you write this up for me? This is what I did. Or, you know, can you ch test this out? This is what I saw. And so it really is just kind of like everybody here, like whether they're QA, whether they're developers, this, that, we're all working together on the same objective. You know, we want a fantastic game. We want to give somebody like that magical experience of Hogwarts. <laughs>